Hi everybody, Jo here again. Welcome to another Mindful Monday and I'm going to spend a bit of time crafting and adding something into our journal. So I hope you've got a brew, maybe a cheeky biscuit and you're sitting comfortably, plump those cushions up and let's spend some quality time together. I must admit I, I do love these sessions, I love coming in and I'm, I'm so privileged that you let me come into your homes offices well if you sneak in a little look in the office i don't know maybe are you are you at home i hope you're not on the bus or on the train and there's other people listening <laughs> imagine i'd love to know what places do you listen maybe just leave me a little comment that would be interesting wouldn't it It'd be lovely to find out where you all watch and listen to me anyway today you know what i'm like sorry i digress so what happens when you come into my house that's why i need to make you a brew because you'd listen to my ramblings. Now, last week, if you remember, last Tuesday, we had a look at blending. So we made these lovely backgrounds. So I really fancy adding one of these into my journal. And I'm going to go for this blue one. Just to show you, a few of you have asked, you know, where do we start with our journal? And we really want to start, what do we do? So let's make a whole double page spread out of this one piece of card. Now, I'm going to work in my larger journal, as always. But what I have done is I've actually created a design because I always promised that I would show you, for those of you that have got the smaller journals, you can make some beautiful designs in your small smaller journals. And so what I did was this was actually a background that I'd already made. And this was using the bud stencil and it was a clean up. And it was perfect when I had my blended background. So what I thought we'd do is I'll actually create a background like this in my larger journal, which we can then add a stamped image in our larger one. But often what I do is I make them in readiness. So I really do use my journals for cleaning up. I mean, so many of these are just made on backgrounds where I've cleaned up. You see, there's one. And I just leave them ready because you never know. I mean, I couldn't believe it when I actually found that one and it looked perfect to add this to. So that's what I thought we'd do. Well, that's the idea. You know what I'm like. So let's find a space in our larger journal. Oh, see, there's one waiting. That'll be ready for another day. Right. Let's just have these two pages here. And I'm going to, I can't decide, I've got two stencils out, the flora and the coral, and I can't decide which one to use. See, the coral's the obvious one for fish, but I like the flora. Oh, decisions, I think I'll go for coral. So what I'll do is I'll show you, we'll use a positive or negative on these two pages, I think. Now, I've got the same colours out. As always, I'm afraid there's not a lot of room here. These journals are fabulous, but it doesn't leave me much room. Let's just, I also need longer arms. What about you? More space, longer arms. Now, I've got my three colours out that I used originally. So that's Prize Ribbon, Salvaged Patina and Mermaid Lagoon. So I'm just taking the lids off and I'm sorry if my arms are in shot, as I say, so little space. And let's just begin by blending some ink. Now I've got my blue stencil brush, but I've also got different coloured blenders that go in each of the inks. Because you know I'm a bit funny like that, I have certain things that go in certain colours. So what I'm going to do is we'll just sort of start and we'll add... A little bit of ink at the bottom here and I'm starting with the dark and then I'll go to my medium and I'm not taping my stencil down got to be honest I think it just looks a bit more organic in my journal if I don't and then I'll just come into my lighter colour and I'm not going right up to the edges I want it to almost look a little bit we'll put another one here and we'll do the same If it doesn't look too perfect, I like that because it's a background anyway. 
Now this is doing two things. It's giving me a background because one lady, and I'm sorry, I didn't make a note of your name. I keep trying to, but I forget. Sorry, blame my age. Um, you asked about making backgrounds. So this is a good way to just think of making backgrounds in your journal. So what I've done there is I've just added ink through my stencil. And so that's a background ready. But also we've got that ink on here. Now, normally for me, when I'm busy crafting away, any time, I always keep my journal near. So any time I'm doing a project, whatever the project is, if I've got ink on my stencil, I always clean it off in my journal. So I'll take my water spritzer. And this is where Eric, and by the way, to the lady who messaged me and asked me who Eric is, Eric's my black Labrador, bless him. And he sits under my craft table. But every time I spray my stencil, obviously I don't want to spray it near my inks. So I always spray it away from my craft table. But that's when Eric gets his little shower blessing. Now what we'll get here, depending how much water we've added and how much ink there was on my stencil, we'll get almost like the positive look. And this, A, cleans up your stencil, but B, is a lovely way of having that ready-made background. Now, I'm planning on using these backgrounds today, but as I say, each time I clean my stencil, I just add it to my journal. And then sometimes when you've got a piece of artwork, it may be that actually you've got a background ready-made. I've got to be honest, that's the fun of it, just looking through. So if we lift that up, look at that. And we might even get a little bit more, sometimes these odd little bits just a little bit more water I don't think there's much left on it but just in case there's that little bit more over here even if it just gives me a hint of colour just in these spaces now if I specifically wanted a little bit more say here what I could do is just dry my stencil off look let's move this out of shot I will just dry my stencil off and literally take the ink that's on because you'd be amazed how much is on your blending tools. Mop that up. Bring my journal back. And then just at this bottom bit again, sorry Eric, you're having double spritz today. Just add so although you've used the cleanup, you are adding a bit of extra ink, just where you know you want. There we go. So can you see that just gives me, so you can manipulate it and you can always just add little bits. You're almost stamping with that stencil. So we're going to pop that on the floor and give our stencil there's not much left on it, but we'll give it a bit of a wipe. And again, be mindful with your stencil. Clean it in the direction that it flows. Front and back. And then I'm just going to pop the lids on my ink. Try and keep, I was going to say a tidy space, but honestly, if you saw this, it's anything but tidy. Right, and we'll get our lovely topper. And what we can do is we can stamp this up while the background is drying. And although when I um, did the blending, I had it that way, I'm actually going to use it this way. I quite like it this way. And what we've got is I've got the fish from the fish set and we're going to stamp those. I love these fellows. I just thought blue. And again, with that background I had. So I'm going to use my black. And we've got them swimming in a, is it a shoal of fish? What do you reckon, shall we? And I want him, oh, sorry, did you hear that was my shoulder cracking? Oh, I don't know what that's all about. And let's have the other chap. Looks nice if you have, I mean, this is quite a small. Let me measure this for you. It's not a huge piece of card. I mean, it's only five and a half inches by three and a half. So, you know, don't think you have to produce a, a massive piece of artwork to go in your journal. 
we're going to make this whole design around it, this smaller piece of card. Now we need some of this, I think this is marine kelp. We need some little seaweed and you know, um, what do you call it? I suppose <laughs> kelp. Um, underwater vegetation is what I'm thinking of. Now this I'm stamping in twilight because it's sort of a, a lovely deep blue. And I'm thinking this is going to show up really well on this side where it's the lighter colour. And we'll do a bit of first and second generation and just alter the height. And as you can see, it's building up already. Now I must admit, this design is great for mail cards. And I hate to say, say it, but you mail crafters watching, I do apologise, but oh, you are tinkers, you're not easy to make cards for. So I've got to be honest, this is such a lovely design for you males. Need a little scuba diver, don't I? Now, I just want to add something in, in the background. So what I did on my original is I've got the water sprite verse. And, and this is a lovely verse. And as always, I've put myself an arrow on the back of my stamp. So... I stamp it the right way because I have been known to stamp upside down. Now this one I'm actually stamping in grey and this is morning mist, she says carefully checking. Just because I want to be able to see it but it not be too in your face. I could use second generation but I'm thinking I just want first generation so I can, you see that doesn't look particularly grey almost has a bluey tinge now I'm going to re-ink it because I actually want two-thirds of the stamp again and if I'd have stamped this straight it would have actually had some first and second generation and it wouldn't have looked right so I want to pop it this side check it straight you always have to watch because do you know what if you don't check it straight it's something that will annoy you and you will see it again and again So I like that. Let's give that a bit of a blot because we don't want to smudge it. Now what I have done ready is I've, to go on my other side, I've got myself a piece of card and I've stamped the verse and then I've done a little bit of second generation so the two match up. But what I'm actually thinking is maybe we could have the other half of that fish. So let's just, let's do it in, no, let's do it in black so it's the same. I do this, I have a plan in my head. <laughs> and then when we start playing, I completely go and just do something random. But I'm thinking we could have that there and that there. Just adds a little bit more interest. And we'll give that a blot because I'm just going to edge that in blue. And if I don't blot it, it'll smudge. So maybe while it dries, because you know I worry about smudging it, let's add some colour to these fish. Now, when it comes to colour, you've got lots of choices. You can use your watercolour pencils, you can use um, your inks and paint, but because we've got so much ink on the background already, I'm actually gonna come in with some gel pens. And they will sit beautifully on top. And I'm thinking if we just add, and also because of that shimmer, they look like those gorgeous little fish. Is it tetras or something? There is there's something like that and neon tetras and they look, mind you, a lot of the fish are beautiful, aren't they? So if we do a bit of that on there, and then let's come in with this blue. This is a beautiful... And it's almost adding that shimmer without it being too in your face. I mean, there are some cards when and designs in my journal, I like to add full shimmer. Others, I just like to go for more of a, a subtle. But again, it depends how I feel. So if you look, that just gives it that bit of not sure if you can if you can catch it and again you will spend longer 
I just get conscious I don't like to keep you too long. I know you're all busy, busy little bees. And because we added the water splats in the background, it's lovely because it almost looks like the water, doesn't it? And what we'll do, we'll just edge this. Now I've got choices. I've got my three blenders, haven't I? I'm going to go for the darker one. But I just need a piece of kitchen towel. I didn't have one ready. Just because I'm conscious, I don't want to. Now, I've probably got enough ink, and I like to do it this way because I'm using the ink that's left on my blending tool. I do the same with my brushes. I don't always ink them up straight away. I like to use what's on it. And I do think journaling's great for that. It almost gives me an excuse to use things up. I like that. And what we can do, let's just add a few little, just so it, we want it to be a cohesive design. So we want both sides, of these pages, to look like they were made to go together. So if we just add a little bit of the water on there, then I think those two are going to go really well together. I could colour these in, but I like them just in black and white on that side. You know, the pages don't have to be identical, but just have elements that tie them together. That's the best advice I can give you. Just a couple of elements to keep those designs cohesive. So let's have a look in my smaller one. What did we do? So we've got the background. We've stamped up. Yeah, so we're nearly there. But as I say, look how lovely it looks in, in the smaller one. So let's see how our larger one is drying. She says, I've got to file the smaller one now on the floor. And yeah, this is dry. You could run the heat tool over it if you needed, but it's lovely and dry. Now, what I'm thinking is we could just stamp some. How flat's that? Not very. It's the trouble when I had all my embellishments. Let's just make it a bit flatter. And let's stamp some marine kelp in the twilight. And again, I'm going to do some first, second and third generation. And alter the heights and the angles. And I just want this again, just right across. And I think that will just... Now I need to add some at the other side. So bear with me. Honestly, if you saw the size of my little desk. I get quite envious when I see pictures of you lovely ladies that have fabulous craft rooms and you gentlemen... Right, and we'll add some. Now this side, I know it won't show up as well because I've got a darker background. I've got more stencil work in the background, but I still want it there just to add, as I say, to that lovely cohesive design. One of the ways I can make it stand out more is add more first generation stamping and less second. Does that make sense? Because it's going to be darker. If I thought it wasn't standing out enough, I could also add some stamping in black in front. But I like the blue. I don't want to add any more. I think it actually shows up enough. I think that's lovely. And just for anybody who's um, not seen this sort of design before, the reason I'm putting my copy of paper underneath is just to give me a bit more of an even surface. This is the rough journal, so it is textured, so it's not as easy to stamp perfectly. But also, because I add embellishments, and we'll just go to a page look, so I've got paper clips, I've got my gorgeous um, little pins from Lavinia. Here, look. So because I add embellishments and 3D items, what it means is that my journal isn't flat, so it just means it's not as easy to stamp on. So one of the ways of minimising that 
is by putting your copy of paper underneath. So I like that. And I'm thinking I've got my two lovely pieces, look, to add. Now it's just missing something at the top for me. I wonder if I could stamp a fish, although I don't want, I don't, I don't think a fish would look right at the top. I know. Just going to look for my, my moon masks. I'm thinking. Right, so. What I'm thinking, I just think it looks a little bit bare at the top. So I'm just going to put almost, let's just take those off a minute. In my head, almost like the moon reflecting, you know, from the sky. So let's just use the salvage patina, the lighter colour. And I want to pop it over both pages, look. And, and this, you know, it could be an orb, it could be... I just want something up here. It's a journal, so it doesn't have to, you know, be exactly precise. But I just need something up here and just down the middle there. Just a little bit more. And often, I've said to you before, you'll know if there's something missing. But sometimes you don't know what it is. Let me have a look. And then I'm just going to... Grab my fan brush and just add a little bit of water here. Again, just to add. When that dries, you'll see that extra texture. And then we'll pop our pieces in. I'm so glad that so many of you have bought these journals and are joining in with this um, lovely process. It is lovely to read your comments. Now, I'm just going to pat that. It's not quite dry. Again, at home, I would leave it, let it dry naturally, pop off and make myself another coffee. But I think that's lovely there. And we'll get some of our bippity boppity glue. I've been practising, can you tell? <laughs> and again, as always, with, with my finger, I'm just going to bring that glue to the edge, just so it all sticks down. It dries clear, so don't worry. And I think we'll pop that there. And a little tip, put your kitchen towel over, just to press it down. Because obviously I've got glue and ink on my fingers. All these things, just try and minimise um, your, uh, you know, your, your dirty fingers or potentially dirty fingers. So let's come to this side. And we'll add our glue. And again, I'm thinking there. Let's check it straight. Would help if I put my head on straight this morning, wouldn't it? I think I put it on at an angle when I got up. There we go. And again, when you think this was just out of that blended background and we've we're getting together a lovely two-page spread. And look how this is drying up here. And I'm just going to pat that. And what it's done, it's just added, if you look, a little bit of texture. Not a great deal, but it is texture. And that's what I love about these journals. Now, I have stamped the urchins out earlier. I have this thing on any little bits of card I save. I do stamp other objects. And I'm wondering about just adding the urchins here, you know. Or here, or here. Now, I like it there. So, 
do love this little row of, of urchins. So again, we'll just pop that, I'm thinking, just here. Just to give me something else on the bottom there. And I've just coloured it with my watercolour pencils. I do that if you've got a little bit of spare time. I just stamp stamps out on spare card. And then I have a little box with all my extra bits in. And it's amazing how many times, and they're perfect for your journals, you know. Never throw anything away. Keep them ready. Now we need some of our fabulous Posca splats on here, don't we? So let's give it a shake. And let's see. Oh, I know what I haven't put on. Getting a bit carried away. Before I do that, I want to add some glitter. And I've got this lovely, I think, is it called Cayman? It's this beautiful, I've been dying to use it. Every time I go to the Lavinia shop, I buy myself a different coloured stickles. Do you remember I bought this lovely green one the other week? That lime green, and I've used that. So this one's been waiting in the wings. So I'm thinking this is going to be fabulous to use. Now, I've not used it before, so I'm look brand new. So let me just put some on my mat just in case it spits. No, that's okay. Now, I'm actually going to put it normally. I put it on with a, a paintbrush, don't I? But because this is sort of under the sea, I don't want any paint marks and any brush strokes. And I want to just sort of dab it around. And I'm thinking, let's add some... And it just, I'm thinking, with the colour and make it look all watery. Now you can see why I needed to wait and do my Posca after. Because my Posca wouldn't be dry and I'd end up dabbing my Posca. So especially on these. Yeah, that's lovely. So I'll just add some to the other side. Same thing, I'm just going to put it right along the bottom. And this will just add to that shimmery. Let's just catch that there. Again, to make them look like they're joined up. It's all important to make these look like almost they're attached to each other. You don't want it to look, you want to make it look like there's a reason that you've put this in here. And that the whole design flows. So if you've got areas, and, and that's what we mean by a cohesive design. We want areas where it's obvious that it's all here together. And little things like this just help it all tie together. So can you see there, if I zoom in a bit, how this now looks? And if we just add a bit up there, it almost looks like a ripple. Can you see flowing up? Or bubbles? So again, it flows. The whole thing looks like it's supposed to be a, a design together. If we just go back to this side, so how we're we feeling here, a little bit here, look. And again, so that way we're connecting the fish here, down here with the uh, kelp and then into the urchins. And what I'm fancying doing is that there goes and then just have a little bit up here. So it's going towards this sun, moon, orb can be any of those but yes I'm happy with that and look I've got a lovely glittery finger <laughs> so now I can do my Posca splats and then I can leave them to dry now I know not everybody likes the Posca splats so again if you don't you can leave the, it off you could add paint and also glossy accents would be fabulous. So I'm just going to put the lid on and give it another shake. Don't want to do that schoolboy error of leaving the lid off, do I? But I just want some white in here. Especially where it's dark, look, it'll really... And again, over my urchins. Just to tie. Again, I'm happy with that and just add a few on this side tie the whole thing together oh look at that do you see that 
So any of you that say what happens if you tap too hard, that's what happens. Your point flips out, but don't worry, we'll leave that, that's fine. Got a nice black there, now look. So has that ever happened to any of you? Does this mean I'm being too rough with it? <laughs> Mind you, the amount I use that white Posca for my splats. But look, I've actually labelled it, this is the one I use for my splats. And I think it's probably taking exception to that, and that's why it's spitting its, uh, it's spitting its dummy out at me. So there we go. So that's that page. And if we go across, there's that page. And I just think considering all we did, we can more or less get them on, can we? All we started off with was that lovely blended background. I might just stamp a word up here. Again, I'm not sure. You know me, I like to leave it at this point because I think it's finished, but I quite fancy just putting a word here, but I'm not sure what. I might put, hmm, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to look in my sentiments. If I stamp something now, I may spoil it. And I've said this before, sometimes I've really enjoyed making that and sometimes you have to walk away at this point. I'm going to have a coffee and then I'm going to come back and I'll see. But I'm thinking just for balance and to cover my eye this way, I think I just need something there. So when I've come back and I've stamped it, I'll, um, I'll show you next Monday the finished one depending what I decide. Now, speaking of which, tomorrow you need to join me because we're going to be looking at Mica Minerals, fabulous product and how we use it. Now, I actually think I could introduce some Mica Minerals onto this project. So after you've watched tomorrow, see what you think and I may just come back and add some Mica Minerals to this just to complement this underwater theme. And that's the beauty of journaling. You can come back to pages. There's no pressure. You don't have to finish it in one sitting, in one day. You can come back to it. And to be honest, that's what I love. I love coming back to it. Thank you for joining me today. And, you know, have a chat with each other. See how you're finding your journaling. It is lovely that we've got a community on here. And keep sharing your pages because, again, we do we inspire each other. But also, we might just give each other some designs. And I know a few of you are having a bit of a rough time at the minute. And I know you love to see each other's work. So please, carry on. And you take care. It's lovely that we love af look after each other. See you again tomorrow. Pop back soon. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.